cups. You want to get a little cup? She get it. Actually, everybody is going to get a little tasting cup. That's how we're going to do the people's choice award. Okay. And um, and then the judges will taste. And then whatever greens are left after that, we'll have with them. The okay. Recipes. So, yeah, you can get some more either. Did you cook with frozen ones or? It, yeah, I can cook with frozen. I can make some man with the, with the fresh ones. Okay. So it's up to you. Whichever one. Let's do that because I don't know when these other ones are going to get delivered and I'll try to get them to you tomorrow. Okay. I'll try to get them with a good acre tomorrow. Um, yeah, because you have destinations for the rest of the ones in your car. Um, I have, yes. Okay. But, I mean, there's extra greens in there too, but I was just thinking if we should use, or maybe it's not good to use the... I'd use up the fresh ones first because the other ones are already frozen. But we were talking about handing them out at the oh. cook-off. Yeah, so people that works wanted too. to try nice. them, you know. Sweet. Oh, that's a great idea. And we're going to use some for uh, centerpieces. Oh, nice. And Stephanie's setting up a educational piece about different kinds of greens to use. And she's got a little game that people can play, matching games. So it'll be educational. And then nutrition is going to be there with information on the nutrition of greens. And okay. So, yeah. Cool. So, um, I suppose we could give the frozen ones away, too. So well, we can just call me tomorrow. We can make some. That yeah, can okay. be a mix. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Okay. So, do you want to scoot in just a little bit so that you're closer together so I can get some a little closer to you? Yeah. That, that works? Yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to like lean in way in. That's your okay. You're all looking at, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is Carolyn Brown, and Carolyn's going to be a contestant in the Greens Cook-Off on yes. Saturday, <laughs> and we want to just find out a little bit about your green story and what. Um, can you tell us about when you first learned how to cook greens or when you first ate them? Okay. They go way back. So as a kid, I grew up in the South. In the South where we grew greens. Um, I remember as a kid, we used to pick, um, you know, pick the weeds and act like we was cooking greens. <laughs> um, so watching my grandmother cook greens, so we would go to the garden, we would harvest the greens, um, we would pick the greens, and then we would watch her cook them. Um, so it started out when I was uh, about seven. And so I've been eating greens, harvesting greens, doing the garden thing since seven. I um, got older. As a teenager, I my first experiment with cooking greens was 15. It was 15. Um, and then like we would experiment with different food. And so in the South, you would use one piece of meat, we call salt pork meat. Um, it would be a cured piece of meat, salt, totally different, good taste. Uh, the second, piece of meat I experimented with greens was ham hocks which is also a smoked piece of meat and the last but not least is smoked turkey which is really good too so <laughs> I've been eating greens my whole life um, it's really good I mean it's very nutritious uh, and then like we were eating with our hand versus a fork <laughs> gotta have a cornbread to go with it some cornbread made from scratch or it's called a hot water cornbread that you were cooking the skillet but it's delicious though. Cause it's like a little pancake. You know, you just make this cornbread like little pancakes. <laughs> so yeah, it's really good. So you just take cornmeal and add water? And you would make your cornbread up like you regular would, a box of Jiffy Mix or whatever your choice is, and just pour it in the skillet and cook it like you was cooking pancakes. Mm. And they call it hot water cornbread. <laughs> oh. Cause it turned out, like it's not a bigger portion, you just make a stack of it like pancakes. Uh -huh. Good. It so good. Pick up your greens with the cake, and just crumble it up in your cake, and your green crumb, crumb the greens. cornbread up in your greens. Okay. Yeah, you eat it the same. You just cook it differently. It's just a thinner piece of bread. Yeah. When you don't want to cook a whole pan of cornbread, you can just cook it like that. Then you don't have to cook a whole pan full. Okay. So yeah. I am really curious about if you're teaching your children how to make greens and yes. your grandchildren like. Yes, yes. He, 
Did, he loved to cook. Cooking? <laughs> Does he like to cook? Yeah, he liked to cook. So <laughs> he in the kitchen. So he's like, what you do with this? So oh. we talk him through, like, what you do and what not to do. Um, my Both my girls know how to cook. All my kids know how to cook. But my girls cook greens more and want some. And my other son, he loved chili versus going out. If anything other than some quick and easy, somebody else have to do that. Because <laughs> he's not going to do it. But yeah, my both my daughters know how to cook greens. That's great. And they cook with turkey more than they do with pork. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, since you were seven, do you ha have you added any special twists to your greens? And, or, no. Or it tastes good mix. So mixing kale, mustard, and collards is a really good combination. Okay. And putting a little spinach in there. Not a lot of spinach because you put too much spinach. It's kind of bland so it changes the flavor. But just a little bit of spinach in there and it's good. Yes, so you have four different type of greens, but when you put them all in a pot and you season them right, it's good. <laughs> You're making my mouth <laughs> water. <laughs> so, and another thing too that make like you can take your greens and pre-cook them and put them in the freezer, and so when you get ready to cook them for fully, oh my god, because then you gonna let all the flavor, the marinade in there, oh it tastes so good. <laughs> That's another secret too. <laughs> pre-cook them and just put them in the freezer so you get ready to, um, to eat them. So for Saturday in the greens cook-off, uh, what kind of meat are you going to use? Turkey, some smoked turkey. turkey. Okay. Yep, I'll be using smoked turkey. Sounds good. Yes. So I'm looking forward to Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so when you cook greens a lot, how where do you usually get your your collards and turnips and mustards? And uh, Cause I got a garden in front of my house, mm -hmm. so I took my greens and over the course of the, the growing season, and I cut them up and put them in the freezer. So the non-growing season, I used them then. So like it might have been like some kale, I might get out of some cub foods or whole foods mm -hmm. to add to them. But I grew some kale too, so. Okay. It depends on how much I'm cooking, and if I'm only cooking for me, I have enough already. But if I'm cooking for the kids, I have to go to the store and add to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, in general, um, can you tell us if you think there's anything in the neighborhood that could be, um, well, first of all, what good things are there in the neighborhood around food and around gardening and uh, food access? The community gardens. Um, when they did the first, they started with the garden in the box. Mm -hmm. That was the first one. Then uh, they expanded with all the community gardens, and that really helped out. So that was a plus to see, like, the engagement, like how many people get an interest, how many people didn't know that they could grow certain foods, and they learned that you can grow certain foods in this area. So, yeah, especially how when people learn about the different soils. Yeah. How many backyard box gardeners are there now through C? Um, I think it's about 15. About 15. Yeah. Nice. So most of them have those garden in the boxes, and some of them have the um, collapsible boxes. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can think of that gardeners might want to increase production or um, that would be helpful in having better access for more people? Uh, yeah, maybe try to expand on growing more beans and peas. That way it's more accessible, and then that will sustain longer during non-growing season. Mm -hmm. To grow more of those type of items. Okay. Do you, I know Jocelyn wanted to talk about the out, outside out <laughs> garden out there. Do you have any thoughts you want to share with us about that? Um, that was really accessible. That garden was very accessible to the individuals that work, the employees that work here. Because, mm -hmm. like, they might, instead of getting out of work, having to run to the store to get certain items, you can just go right outside and it's accessible to you. So, that garden site really was a good garden mm -hmm. site for accessibility for the employees in the building itself. Okay. And it got a lot of attraction for community engagement, too. A lot of individuals sent emails, stopped by, talked about the garden, wanted to find out how they can get involved to become a gardener themselves. Mm -hmm. Any other food stories you want to share with us? Uh, or? Yeah, well, depending on what you're growing, um, they got a recipe, it's called cha-cha. 
that you can I got utilize. That last <laughs> one time. I did it in you, the you can <laughs> utilize instead of letting all those tomatoes go away. That's a try to find recipes that you can use to can. Yeah, that you can learn how to can so you can have food going on growing seasons. So, are you willing to share these recipes, or are you keeping them kind of? I share the cha cha. <laughs> Not I'll the greens. The, the greens. It's pretty simple. Mm. It's pretty simple, cause it's about to have what type of seasoning. Like a lot of people don't like a lot of salt, so it's kind of you have to season it to your taste. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just not bland, but season to your taste. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that's all the secrets, though. Valentine, do you have any questions? Yeah. Is there anything else? I mean, so part of what I've been excited about what we talked about making a cookbook is, uh-huh. like, a cookbook for, like, like the, the whys and the hows. Like, mm-hmm. how do we make the community better through this cooking? So I'm curious, you know, if there's anything else you think. Like, if we had a cookbook that was for making neighborhood food, mm-hmm. what else would you want to see in that cookbook? Um, that wasn't just, like, the recipes for food, but also, like, what can we do for food to bring people together? And Pictures. Pictures tell a thousand stories. Because pictures kind of, in the cookbook, the pictures can kind of like relate to the history maybe of that food or the culture of a family or things like that. That would really enhance it, make it more attractive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how they fell up with you. <laughs> 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 kind of pictures, yeah. That's yeah, really just cool. pictures, you know, around the food. Because that whole picture and that food going to tell a history. Mm-hmm. And it's going to maybe, you know, spark attention to somebody that it might be something they might see. I mean, you have a bunch of words in one place, but then since it's a community base, it'll be feeling more of a community because it'll have a picture that can relate back to maybe it was a kid and they may have a picture when they was on a farm or mm-hmm. they was at a garden site. But it'll relate to yeah. why this, why it's so important or why is it what make you will want to try cooking this food? Yeah, you put the history in there. With yep. Because I think it helps spread. I'm really excited to see the stories, even just that people have been sharing. Like, <laughs> it helps. It helps show how much, like we have community wealth. Mm-hmm. We just need to be able to show it and to kind of get rid of some of the obstacles. Yeah. And so, yeah, showing that really clearly, I think, is helpful. Cause like some people may have pictures of their grandmother in the kitchen, you know, mm-hmm. like um, cucumbers. They, as a kid, I remember in the South, they took cucumbers and made butter, um, these butter, butter sweet pickles. They turned them to pickles, and oh my God, they like the best pickles in the world. Like it's things like that. Like they took the fruit and made it out of preserved <coughs> jams and all those things. Like those uh, recipes to have, yeah. but with pictures to relate back to it. My question is, um, how do we get more people like you and the other folks that we've interviewed have this just amazing family history of cooking and passing that on? But then there's all other people out there in the community who are sort of disenfranchised and they're young people, they don't know how to cook, they haven't been cooking with... Folks, how can we, you know, adopt those people, people like you, and to share that? I mean, do you think that's a valid thing, or? It could be a hands-on community meal. Yeah. A community meal, like, and then have a either soul food slash something, but it all, and that way people will come, want to be engaged, because now they get to actually, you can hear about it, they got the movies on TV, but when you're doing that person, that's going to make people come out. That's going to bring that spark of interest, and that's going to be like, how do I do it, and get it going. So actually cooking together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the demos you have going for the greens, is anybody showing how to, like, wash and chop the greens or anything like that? Like, that might be a good... I think that'd be another good one if we can get... Because we're going to have, um, hopefully, have Malcolm in the shop. And, cool. And... I'm sure he would chop for us too. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, it was sort of just hard to get the interviews going, and but we do need somebody to sh- actually show what's going. Send on. pictures. Yeah, let people just take pictures because somebody might 
chop their greens. Some people might break their greens up with their hand. Like, it's different ways they do it. And then sometimes some people just put them all in the pot. Yeah, so maybe when you send the letter, letter. Let's everybody ask them if they could take some pictures about how they do it so we can share it. And I think if you frame it just the way you just did, like, mm -hmm. how can we share this with people who haven't had the chance to learn? Yeah. That would be great. Okay. Because then you're going to see various ways, right? So you might get 10 different pictures showing you 10 different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So will you take some pictures of your preparation? Yes, cool. I will. Awesome. Cool. That's very cool. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Carolyn. You're welcome. And I hope you bring your grandson and your family to I will. on Saturday. Yep, I will. Good. I got my granddaughter in there now, so. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> the car at the after school program. Oh, okay.